If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. That's one of my favorite excerpts from a poem called If by Rudyard Kipling. Many of you may know. If not, I'm going to link to it in the show notes below. But I love that, and especially for what we're talking about today, about what is that concept, done is better than perfect. Let's deep dive into that. What does that mean? And when is it appropriate and when is it not? When does it work and when does it not work? So today, chatting all about done is better than perfect. I'm Andrea with the ADS Agency, here to bring you the very best in marketing and branding tips, as well as business tips for those of you who are aspiring entrepreneurs or current business owners, or even those of you who are just working on your personal branding, trying to figure out how to make your personal brand better out there. Thank you for joining us, we're here for you. All right, so again, that poem, If by Rudyard Kipling, I love that for this topic of done is better than perfect. Um, and, and I'll tell you a quick little story of something that happened or uh, was said to me recently and I came across someone at an event who said, oh yeah, I know you, I met you here and um, you said next time you see me and we chatted on LinkedIn and you said to tell you next time you see me, make sure you say hi so I know who you are, blah, blah, blah. And so they happened to see me at this next event. And so um, they introduced themselves. And so they said, yeah, I heard a lot about you. And I said, oh, really? What did you hear? And one of the things they heard was that they heard I was quite successful, which to me, I could really laugh at that <laughs> because, um, you know, success is truly in the eye of the beholder. You know, maybe um, some of the things I've done could be viewed as successful. I have. Um, serve on a global level in a branding capacity. I lived in Scotland for a year working overseas um, in a global branding role, which was awesome. And I thought it was just a great adventure and really fun, um, you know, and, and just started a business. It's a year and a half old now, plus and growing. So, uh, you know, maybe people look at things like that and think, oh, okay, so she's pretty successful. And in my world, I think I have so far to go. <laughs> like, I really have so far to go. Um, you know, and, and that's not to say you can't celebrate successes and wins along the way and that kind of thing. Certainly, I'm a big proponent of that. We can cheers it up anytime you like over any little success. Um, but I would never, ever feel like, and I think a lot of people may feel like this, but I would never feel like I've arrived, so to speak. Um, I just always feel like there's so much more to do and so we have so far to grow. Uh, you know, they just, we're always trying to find a way to continue learning and growing. So uh, again, that's all to say that success depends on your viewpoint. Um, and I think that's what all this is about. When we talk about done is better than perfect. It all comes down to accomplishing things, getting things done, getting ish done. How do we do that um, and why is that important? Uh, that is what the path of success is paved with, is all these accomplishments, but really, honestly, also failures along the way. Failing forward, as some people call it, um, you know, it's trying. It's trying and learning from our mistakes as we do that. Um, you know, nothing is a better teacher than failure or you know failure is also perceived you, know, you can perceive it as failure you can perceive it as your education so to speak <laughs> as i often do this is my education in a business so um so right two things that come to mind when we talk about done is better than perfect um is what are the barriers to success for a lot of people in this capacity and one is analysis paralysis which is thinking so much to Rudyard Kipling's point, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, or also, as he said, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, meaning we're not always just only dreaming, not always just only thinking we are people of action as well. Um, that action is important and that's a little bit what the idea of done is better than perfect speaks to. Uh, so analysis paralysis, that's a, 
an enemy of success and getting things done. Another is uh, what I like to call perfectionism paralysis. So a lot of us, especially if you're an A-type personality, if you remember those, those terminologies uh, when they came back decades ago, uh, if you're an A-type personality and you're, everything always has to be perfect and everything's all about making things just right and exactly the way you see it and exactly to your vision and nothing is better and if you don't achieve that, then you're not getting it done the way you want to and then you may as well scrap it. Um, perfectionism paralysis is a barrier to success it's real and and honestly I'd like to address that um, it can come in many forms if you're writing a book it's writer's block if you're an artist working on a painting working on a piece sculpture um, your next song whatever it is uh, it might be artist block or art block as they may call it um, it's the idea that you're always endlessly tweaking, endlessly tweaking to no end. Um, and you never quite finish something because of that, because you're always of the mindset that it has to be perfect or I can't put it out there. So that brings to mind a wonderful artist we will never forget, Michael Jackson. Michael was an excellent, he's such an excellent example of this because he did not sacrifice perfectionism for getting things done. He got it done, but he pushed so hard to make sure that it was excellent, that the moves were perfect, that the sound was perfect, that it was just exactly the way that he envisioned. He didn't let up. It doesn't mean that you sacrifice on the quality or how amazing something can be, but it also does mean you finish, you get things done. There is an um, author I really like named John Acuff. He wrote the books Start and Finish. <laughs> so um, we actually hired him to speak in an event a couple of years ago, and he was talking to us all about the idea of starting. You know, so not letting analysis paralysis keep us from starting a project. Um, and not letting perfectionism paralysis keep us from starting that business, writing that book, um, all those things that we have great, grand, grandiose plans for. Um, he wrote a book called Start to get us going. And actually what he learned in his travels and speaking about that book, Start, people were always coming up to him and saying, you know, John, I actually don't have a problem starting things. My problem is I don't finish them. People were always telling them, telling him, I start things and I never quite finish them. And it's because of this analysis paralysis and perfectionism paralysis that we have going on with ourselves. And honestly, a lot of very negative talk that we are not good enough, we're not ready, we don't have all the right equipment to get this done, we don't have the right education, we're not old enough, we're not quite pretty enough, we need this done to ourselves and that done to ourselves before we can start um, or finish. You know, those, all those kind of negative talk things in our head can keep us from either starting or finishing a project, a goal, getting us there. Um, so that was so much of an issue and he heard that so much that he decided to do something about it. And what did he decide? John Acuff wrote those two books. Not only did he write Start, but he also wrote Finish. And why? Because they're both critical to getting things done. Not only do we have to start things, but we also have to finish them. Okay? So start and finish. So do try. Try. It's important to get out there and try. You'll never know what you can do until you do that. Um, what it doesn't mean, we're not asking you to sacrifice excellence. It doesn't mean sacrifice excellence. Do you strive for excellence? Not perfection, there's a difference. Not necessarily perfection, excellence. Do strive for it, but just not at the cost of getting things done, okay? So, do strive for excellence, not at the cost of getting things done. How do we get these things done? Tip number one, set a firm deadline. Set a deadline, whether you make it up whether it's artificial or real, it's a real deadline, a hard one you've got to meet for whatever reason, real or fake, you made it up, whatever it is, 
set that deadline with your team, with yourself, with an accountability partner, a good friend who's gonna hold you accountable. And why? Because to our friend David Patterson's point, who was here not too long ago talking with us a couple months ago about the One Thing book, accountability is so critical to getting things done. It is the fire underneath you, underneath your mm, that gets things done. So if you got good accountability partners who will be there for you, listen to you, but at the same time say, Andrea, mm -mm, don't forget you did say by this date, this was gonna get done. Holding you accountable as much as possible. We understand some things happen. Sometimes you can't help a deadline being missed for whatever reasons, unforeseen things that come up, but try your hardest to stick to those deadlines, okay? And that's how things get accomplished. It's gonna force you to perform with excellence. Sometimes we need that to help us get those things done, okay? So set that firm deadline and again, get that negative talk out of your head. Out of your head, get it out of there. Tip number two, be comfortable with flaws. This is hard for those of you who are perfectionists, those of you who you've got a vision for something, you need it to happen that way, it will. 99% most likely happen the way that you see it. Hopefully, ideally, if it's realistic, if you planned well, all those things. However, you're gonna have to be comfortable with some flaws. Something will always go wrong. It's the laws of the universe. Something will always go wrong. It will. Uh, and you just have to be comfortable with that. Don't let that keep you from getting the big check mark knocked off, okay? So, that's important. Set a firm deadline, be comfortable with flaws. I'm pretty certain Michael Jackson had something go wrong just about every show, just about every, um, just about every video shoot, photo shoot, press conference. Ask him, you know, if you could ask him, I bet he would tell you something went wrong on a lot of those things. You wouldn't know because he's a professional. And what happens if something goes wrong? You make a note of it, you fix it for next time. It's how we get better. It's how we continuously improve and continuously learn. We do lessons learned, you know, post a major event, post a major effort. Sit down with your team, sit down with yourself, sit down with your accountability partner and do lessons learned. What went wrong? What went great? What can we do better next time? This is how we grow. This is how we do better. Prince. Same thing, MLK, ask them all. If you could ask them all, they would tell you things go wrong. They do, Michelle Obama, I'm pretty sure she can tell you. All right, and again, let those artificial mental roadblocks go out of your head, out of your head. Get them out of your head, okay? Uh, all the things that are telling you that you're not good enough, not ready, not well equipped, don't listen to it. It's not true. You are ready right now. You're equipped with everything that you need right now. It's possible. You can do it. Okay. Uh, so I come across, I'm in marketing and branding. The ADS agency is a marketing and branding firm. Uh, I've been doing this for over a dozen years now. I will not um, make you guess my age. Those of you who know me know my age. <laughs> but uh, you know, so I run across a lot of people who, for example, are often working on websites. And websites are one of those difficult little beasts, uh, creations that are hard, hard, um, you know, for a lot of people because it's their baby. You know, we understand that it's your baby, it's your business, it's your personal brand. You want it right, you want it great, you want people to be amazed and wowed and all of that. That's good, you know, but you have to remember that all those things happen under constraints, time constraints, budget constraints, all those things. You know, if you have a deadline for when you want to launch something, you got to do it within those constraints and you got to be happy, you know, with getting the big things done. Get the big things done well, get them done well. The other things you have time to tweak to work on, you know, you do, you really do. It's okay, you can breathe. It does not have to be 1000% perfect on launch. Most things often are not. 
So that's a great example of how we can often let our perfectionism get in the way or our need to always um, have things just right. When you're on deadline, some things you have to learn and, and just say, it's okay. It's okay if we make sure these big things get done and done well, we can work, these are the things that we can work on our BC list of importance that we can work on later, okay? And that's all right. There's a wonderful concept I learned in French class, parlez-vous français, for those of you who love français, uh, called bricolage. Bricolage is the art of pulling together what you have to get things done. It's really tied to actual art. So, you know, a wonderful example of this is uh, like collages, you know, made from shards of glass, broken pieces of plates, all this basically junk, you know, just junk. And bricolage says, take that junk and use it to make art. Make something beautiful out of it. Use what you've got and make something beautiful. Uh, a wonderful example of this is on the Atlanta Beltline for those of you who are in Atlanta and you may have seen these beautiful massive pieces of art made from junk, made from scraps, metal scraps, stuff you can find in a junkyard, Goodwill, side of the road, wherever. And it comes together so beautifully, beautifully. You see, so bricolage is just how we need to be thinking as entrepreneurs, in our careers, wherever you are. Think about what you've got at your disposal and how you can use what you've got to create something beautiful. It's possible, you can do that, okay? Tip number three is to remember that every master was once a beginner. It's true, they were. And so it's okay if things, again, don't go right. The point is that you remember, you remember that and you learn from that. You learn from your mistakes and you use it to get better. But remember that every master was once a beginner. Don't beat yourself up so much, okay? It's all right, it really is. The point is that you keep learning. You learn something, right? Again, it doesn't mean that you sacrifice excellence. You're a master in the making. You are honing your craft. Take the time to hone your craft, okay? It's all right to do that. I know we're a fast, super fast society, but it's all right to learn, to master something. That takes time. Excellence takes time. You can take the time to do that. And again, do the best that you can with what you have right now. So those are our three tips today. Tip number one, set a firm deadline. Tip number two, be comfortable with flaws. They're gonna happen. Be comfortable with it. Make sure the big things get done. The little things will take care of themselves over time. Tip number three, remember every master was once a beginner, okay? So that's it for today. What projects are you working on right now? We want to know. Let us know in the comments below. Are you working on a book, writing a book? We just did a wonderful video about that with Dennis Ross not too long ago. Are you working on your PhD? We know how long those take, forever. Uh, marketing campaigns. Maybe it's a marketing campaign you've been working on and wanting to get done and want, <laughs> drop my pen, wanting to talk to someone about, um, you know, those are things that you could be working on. So let us know in the comments below what's your latest project that you either want to start or finish. Okay, we wanna know about that. And let us know what you think about this topic today in general. We loved um, the concepts of if by that poem Rudyard Kipling wrote called If, um, talking about dreams, not making dreams your master, not making thoughts your aim. We are people of action. Uh, let us know what you think about all this. There's so much, there's so much good stuff to chat about here. I love it, love it, love it, love it, okay? And thank you so much for being here. We so appreciate you. If this is your first time, let us know where you're from, where are you chiming in from in the comments below. We'd love for you to come back. We love it here. We love having you here with us to talk with us about these great topics. Um, and for those of you who are returning, you're marvelous. Love you being here. Thank you so much for your support. 
I do this because of the wonderful comments that I hear from you and I feel that it has value and it's beneficial to you. Um, if you want to hear something different in the future, also let us know in the comments below, okay? Also, one last thing, please be sure to subscribe if you've not subscribed yet to the channel. All the links are in the description below. You can find the links to subscribe there to our e-newsletter, to this YouTube channel, and otherwise. We also have a podcast out now on iTunes. Ah, joy. That's so fun. <laughs> so super fun. So, um check that out as well that little podcast on itunes by the ads agency and finally when you do subscribe here below there is a little bell check out the little bell if you click on that that means it'll let you it'll give you notifications every time we put one of these videos out okay so we don't want you to miss it please make sure you do that and thanks so much for joining us have a great week week out there and make sure you perform with excellence. We'll be looking out for you. Mwah.